Even though we hear a lot today about Black Canadian history in Canada, there's still so much more to learn. A new book co-written by Montreal author and activist Akila Newton tells the stories of the accomplishments of Black Canadians past and present. Volume 2 of Big Dreamers, the Canadian Black History Activity Book for Kids, launches this weekend. And Akila joins me right now. Welcome to our Montreal. Hello. Thank you for having me. So Volume 1 was the ABCs of the notable Black Canadians. How is Volume 2 different? Yeah, so volume two is still a continuation of uh, Canadian Black history. So as you said, volume one uh, was an alphabet of 26 different uh, phenomenal Black Canadians. And with volume two, what we do is we have more content. We have 50 people included in the book, 100 pages, and we break it down by province. So we talk about the uh, historic Black community in each province and people who lived or helped shape the history in that province. And for instance, for Quebec or Montreal, who would that be? So in Quebec, we talk about Little Burgundy. A lot of people aren't familiar with Little Burgundy and, and people who grew up in that area, such as Rufus Rockhead, uh, Daisy Sweeney Peterson, uh, Dr. Oliver Jones. So we have so many phenomenal people in Montreal that a lot of people have never heard of. Mm, okay, so Akila, you call this an activity book. What does that mean exactly? So there are several different uh, coloring opportunities. I have the book right here, so I could quickly show you. You could color in every single page. Uh, we have activities at the end of the book, including some quizzes, some crossword puzzles, uh, lots of activities to keep families and their kids engaged. And this one even has a sticker sheet. Uh, okay, so listen, you're saying to keep families engaged, but technically adults can color in this book too and learn a little something or two. Absolutely. Actually, with volume one, I had a lot of families come up to me and say, you know, we bought this kid, anticipate, I bought this kid, <laughs> we bought this book, <laughs> anticipating that our kids would learn a lot about black history, but we actually learned a lot along the way as well. So it was really fun where parents would sit down with their kids every night and read a different page, and they were learning together. Well, Akila, you've been working on this for quite some time. This is the second volume of your series on black excellence. Why was it important for you to write a second book in the series? Well, when I was working on volume one, there were so many people that I wanted to include in the book, but because we, myself and my co-author, Tammy Gabay, decided to make it an alphabet, we limited it to 26 people. And then we had a list of like 50, 60, 70 more people that we wanted to include. So from that, I was like, you know what? I need to do volume two. And, you know, oftentimes in schools, when students are learning about black history, they learn about the civil rights movement, they learn about the states, but they don't learn about Canada. So I wanted to give basically educators even more opportunities and even more resources to learn about Canadian black history. Well, listen, it's 2020. We are still debating the use of the N-word in education. We still have so far to go when it comes to people's understanding and awareness. So how do you hope your book will help? I mean, I hope people just see that, you know, the black community is very accomplished. I want them to realize that, you know, A, black history is Canadian history, end of discussion. It should be included in the curriculum year round. And I want it to be normalized. I want the black experience to be normalized. And the, the N-word being used in, in textbook stills is just disgusting. I don't understand how in 2020 that's still happening. So it's like if they're saying, well, you know, these are textbooks that we're provided with. Well, you know what? Now you have Big Dreamers Volume 1 and Volume 2 that you could use. Take that textbook and put it in the garbage. <laughs> oh, that's a big message right there, Akila. So you make presentations in Canadian schools every year for Black History Month. Big Dreamers Volume 2 is just coming out. And I know you've reached out to Montreal school boards hoping to get your book into the curriculum. So what kind of responses have you received? So, so far, the Lester B. Pearson School Board reached out and they said, absolutely, we're, we're buying a thousand copies. We need this to be a part of the curriculum. Uh, I have not heard back from any of the other school boards in Quebec. <laughs> and so what are you so, hoping to do? Like, so you haven't heard back from the school boards. Is it because they're thinking about it or you just radio silence? Just radio silence, to be honest. I mean, I don't understand why they would not want to use this in their, their classroom. It's a, it's a great tool for kids. And as I said earlier, it keeps kids engaged. And I've done the work for their teachers. The work is now, you know, the material is all in this book. If you're looking for activities specifically for Black History Month, mm -hmm. it's in here. If you're looking for stuff year round, it's in here. So, I mean, I don't know what the issue is, but I'm really, really hoping uh, that people are going to be more open to this, uh, you know, in the coming weeks once the book actually does come out this weekend. And why is that important for you to have your books read in schools? 
just because the Black experience is not really being shared in schools. I mean, we learn about Samuel de Champlain, but we're not learning about Anne Claire Cools or Yolan James. It just doesn't make sense. And so, Akila, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out here. So you're, you're talking about how, you know, students have to learn about Samuel de Champlain, but they don't necessarily have to learn about any black Canadians until it is Black History Month. So you're really trying to make sure that black history is taught throughout the school year. Well, absolutely. Like I had mentioned, Anne Claire Cool, she's the first black senator in all of Canada and the first black female senator in all of North America. How is that not important history to be learning about? I think also I mean, perhaps there's uh, a, a disconnection. I think there's a lot of people who don't know a lot of ca black Canadian history. As you mentioned earlier, I think we focus more on the civil rights movement. We don't really know much about Canadian history. And so maybe that is why it's not introduced into the curriculum. Well, even more reason for these school boards to use my book in the class. Between volume one and volume two, there are 76 people that wow. they could pick and choose from. That's a lot of people. And a lot Absolutely. that I'm sure I don't know about. I mean, and honestly, I thought I was very well versed in Canadian black history since my twin brother and I have been, you know, going around schools and, and educating about it for so long. But I keep learning about new people and I keep learning about new stories and, and new tragedies in different communities. So, I mean, honestly, I could probably go on and do a volume three, four and five. And give me an example of some of the stories that you hear about students in schools, especially children of color. What are they missing? Well, what cracks me up is since, you know, we're from Montreal, when we talk about Little Burgundy, we ask students, so who here has heard of Little Burgundy? And oftentimes kids raise their hand like, yeah, the shoe store. Oh, <laughs> like, no. I swear to you, I'm not making this up. And we're like, um, no, we're talking about a historic black community. Why would we come to your school during Black History Month to talk about a shoe store? Like that literally makes no sense. Okay. So it's just, it's funny to me how, like I was saying, kids don't really fully understand the roots of, of you know, Montreal. And one of my favorite stories actually in this book uh, from a Montrealer is Rufus Rockhead. And he uh, lived in Little Burgundy. He had a club called Rockhead's Paradise in the early 1920s in Little Burgundy. And it was a booming club. Because of this club, Montreal was called the Harlem of the North. And he brought in legendary Black American artists like Billie Holiday, Ella Fitzgerald, Louis Armstrong. He gave a platform to, you know, local heroes like Oscar Peterson mm -hmm. and Dr. Oliver Jones to perform, and people don't know about him. There's a street named after him. I think and a lot of people in Burgundy are saying, well, we know there's a street named Rufus Rockhead in Burgundy, but a lot don't even know the history behind it. I know, and what's even funnier is I mentioned earlier that students talk about Little Burgundy being a shoe store. Mm -hmm. uh, many years ago, um, some entrepreneur in Montreal tried to open a club. Well, he opened a club called Rufus Rockhead, and it got shut down real quick by his family because they're just like, why are you doing this? Like, you didn't ask us to use his name. Wow. And this is not a representation of what he did. Yes, he was a club owner, but he was servicing the black community. Mm. Okay, so there's a lot of homework to, that still needs to be done. Absolutely. Well, next February will mark the 25th anniversary of Black History Month in Canada. And because of the pandemic, you and your brother can't go into schools for presentations. So what are you planning on doing? So we've had to adapt the tour this year. So unfortunately, as you said, we can't travel in person. It's just not safe. So we're going to be doing a virtual tour. So we'll be visiting classrooms just on a screen. So what's really unique about that is the sense that we could be in Montreal in the morning and Saskatchewan in the afternoon. Okay, so, so a, that's pretty good. And for people yeah. who don't have children or people who are not in classrooms, can they get a, a hold of your presentation? It's not online, but we are going to be working with several uh, municipal libraries, so mm -hmm. they will be able to log on to Zoom uh, and catch the presentation there. Okay, and last but not least, how can we get our hands on your book? So you can go to my website, which is bigdreamers.ca, and you could see volume one and volume two, and there are also some other fun products available on the website. Well, Akila Newton, thank you so much for joining me on our Montreal. Always a, a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you for having me.